In the gospel lesson I chose for today, we see a man paralyzed who is brought to Jesus. We are not told the cause of his paralysis, but we do know that in the popular mind, it was assumed that his illness, whatever its cause, was related to the fact that he was a sinner. That his paralysis was somehow God's judgment on his life. And so Jesus' first words to him were, Take heart, young man, your sins are forgiven. And when the religious authorities heard this and complained, Jesus responds by saying, which is easier to say, your sins are forgiven, or stand up and walk? To make his point, he says to the paralytic, stand up, take your bed, and go home. And guess what? He does. Free from that cultural bias, his paralysis is gone. And he stood up and he went home. In other words, Jesus freed the man from the paralysis of public opinion. He no longer needed to buy into the public image of himself as a sinner or its consequence as a paralytic. He was now free to be. Free to take up his bed and become whatever he was capable of becoming. Likewise, many today who are depressed, who have lost hope, who are paralyzed by the stigma of old age, need desperately to hear that message. Do not let the world define who you are. Don't buy into their stereotype, or in other words, take up your bed and walk. Be what you can be. Paul says in Romans, do not be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Now, this is not whistling in the dark. Old age does have its limitations. But it's not a disease to be overcome. It is a stage of life to be lived and to be lived with gusto. The challenge of old age is to live fully until the day we die. Luther put it this way. If he knew he was going to die tomorrow, today he would be out planting a seed. There are two versions of that. One, it was an apple seed. The other, a little bit more earthy, he was in bed with Kate planting a different seed. <laughs> but whatever the case, he would get on with living life to its fullest. Live fully. And live fully in the awareness that God is not done with us yet. Sure, there are limitations. <clears throat> I'm discovering I can't ride my bike as I used to. But that means doesn't mean I cannot ride. It's only a boundary, not a barrier. Limitations limit us. They take time and energy, yes, but they do not stop us unless we decide to be stopped. In fact, limitations in one area simply make us develop in another. If our legs are weak, then getting out in and out of a wheelchair will only make our arms stronger. If our hearing is impaired, you will begin to write more letters. 
then make phone calls. Limitations at any age and every age call out something in us that we have never considered before. Authors Nancy Huyman and H. Aswam Kayak in their study on social gerontology wrote, we know now that anomia, the inability to remember names, is common to anyone over 30. <laughs> common to anyone over 30. Likewise with names and jokes and spatial cues and phone numbers. It seems as if the brain, as the brain ages, it begins to sort and discard information that is emotionally neutral. What doesn't have personal meaning becomes less and less important to us as the years go by, and therefore less and less accessible in that thinking part of the brain. While matters of emotional impact, on the other hand, become sharper and clearer and fresher. Other mental abilities begin to sharpen as well. We become more reflective, more analytical. We become more able to assimilate and assess data. We begin to notice other dimensions of the world, of people, and of events, and of ideas beyond data, and to absorb them into our answers. We bring experience and knowledge, and then add wisdom to our results. We can still learn. We can still grow. We can still become more fully authentic, more us, more the me I always wanted to be before the business of life got in the way. And God is not done with us yet. Consider the following. At age 90, <coughs> Chagall became the first living artist to be exhibited at the Louvre Museum. Pablo Picasso was still producing drawings and engravings. Chemist Paul Walden was still giving chemistry lectures. American composer Elliot Carter wrote his first opera at the age of 90, and he published more than 40 works between the ages of 90 and 100. At 95, Nola Oaks became the oldest person to receive a college diploma, a degree in general studies with an emphasis in history. At age 100, Alice Porlock of Great Britain published her first book, Portrait of My Victorian Youth. At age 100, Fujia Singh became the oldest person to complete a full distance marathon. This was his eighth marathon. His first one was at age 89. <laughs> Mary Hardison, at 101, became the oldest woman to do a tandem paraglide. And Manuel de Oliveira is the oldest film director in the world and continues to make one film a year after the age of 100. American composer Elliot Carter was still doing commissions until his death at the age of 103. There's a lot of life left, folks. It's not over. It's just beginning to bloom. And the truth is, is that this new stage of life, these later years, this retirement time, this end of life stage, liberates us 
in a way that no other stage of life can possibly do. All the striving is over with now. We don't have to prove ourselves anymore. We don't have to have the way we spend our time approved by someone else anymore. We don't have to work, produce, provide, or get ahead anymore. The only thing required of us now is the blooming of the inner self. Like autumn flowers, rich in color, deep in tone, sturdy in the wind, our lives not only have new color, they bring with them the kind of interior depth a fast-moving world so dearly needs. <coughs> the point of all of this, folks, is there are two approaches to aging. <coughs> there is passive aging and active aging. Passive aging buys into the world's definition of old age and gives way to a creeping paralysis of the soul that goes with the natural changes of the body. But active aging, active aging cooperates with the physical effects of age by adjusting to a change of pace. The person who is aging actively compensates for a loss of hearing by reading more, compensates for a change in eyesight by listening to tapes, stays physically active, however limited that activity may be, rather than simply allowing the muscles of the body to go unused and therefore to become useless. Active aging requires us to go on living life to the full, no matter how differently that life may become. Active aging invites us to journey ever deeper into the mystery that we call life, and to open ever wider into the mystery of the presence of the sacred amongst us. Active aging hears clearly the wisdom of faith that continually whispers in our ear, fear not, for I am with you. Fear not. Amen. God is with us. And then it whispers, pick up your bed. Walk.